Hello, this is my Macintosh Classic 2 and it's broken. Um, so today we're going to try and fix it. We're going to see the damage on the inside that I suspect is there. And yeah, this is going to be an interesting one because this is a little bit out of what I normally do. Uh, I've got my own theories on what's happened inside and honestly they're probably true um, since these theories are very common. Um, but I suppose, since I've done some talking about this Mac, uh, Mac 2, I'd like to let Mac Macintosh speak for itself for a little bit. Yeah! So yeah, it's, it's not working, <laughs> you can tell. Now, uh, I've gone out of the way and I've taken off the key screws with this little doodad here. And so I can probably just separate it right from the, uh, separate the back case right from the machine. Let's see here. All right, almost. There we go. And off it comes. So before I get any deeper into this, uh, I should probably mention that working with these machines is actually pretty dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. And admittedly, I don't. And I only know how to essentially discharge the CRT. And so I'm going to be extremely careful about this because I just had this on, you know. Um, first of all, I don't know if I'm being over precautious, but I'm thinking I'm going to get some rubber gloves. It's never going to hurt me uh, to get some of those. Um, I probably won't be doing anything super precise here, um, but yeah, just, just be really careful and I will show how to discharge this CRT. And I mean, most likely it is, but in the chance that it isn't, you could actually die from electrocution here. So be very, very careful. Uh, with that said, I do need to grab what I need to discharge this thing, so give me just one moment. Okay, so in discharging one of these, the first thing you want to do is you want to connect a little alligator clip to this little grounding thing right here. And yeah, that's... no, okay, come on, let's get you on there. There we go. That's on there. Then you want to grab a screwdriver. Uh, let's see here. Flathead would be ideal. All right. Then you want to connect it, the other end of your alligator clip to this side of your uh, screwdriver. And let me check that this is in shot. Yes, it is. Okay. So this little su suction cup right here you want to just slide your screwdriver under it and it's a bit of work um, you just want to get it in there though it would probably be easier if I did it from the top just gotta work it in there and now that I've got it in there it's a little piece of metal that you want to touch and I believe I've got it Yeah. That thing's discharged. Uh, so whatever discharging circuit was in there did its job. This thing is uh, should be safe to touch. Um, I'm still going to be careful because I don't entirely know, but if it was still charged, you'd hear a pop when I touch that piece of metal. So pretty sure this thing is discharged. I'm going to be careful because you know this is. I, you know, this is pretty dangerous stuff here. This is, I think it's 1500 volts. Y you don't want to get shocked by that. That's really bad, <laughs> to say the least. Right, so the first thing I'm going to see is, uh, well, first of all, I want to remove the uh, logic board here. And so I'm going to start disconnecting cables and crap. Right. 
the only two? I, I don't think so, but... Uh, let's see here. What else do I have to unplug? What else is here? Uh, oh yeah, there's a, a sort of power connector here. It's almost like an ATX connector, but it's a lot smaller. Oh boy, I actually think I see something good in there, and I'll let you know in just a second. Because if that's if it's the case, then we might actually have a lot easier of a time uh, repairing this once it's diagnosed. Look, this thing doesn't want to come out though. There we are. All right, those three connectors are out. I don't know if that's exactly what I need to pull this thing out of here, but we're gonna see. Yes. Oh, perfect, good, good. Uh, not entirely perfect, actually, but not terrible. Okay, so this here is the PRAM battery for this machine. And these have a tendency to leak or blow up uh, or corrode traces on your board. Now, looking closely at this thing, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a bit of corrosion on there, but it's not very bad. Um, honestly, if I were to clean this all off, this thing might actually start working. Could I guarantee that? No, no, I'm not going to guarantee that, but could it? Uh, yeah, there is a potential. But what you want to do is you want to remove this battery as soon as possible, and you never want to put it back in. <laughs> um, you can replace it with a battery, and that would be okay for the next, you know, 15 years or so. But make sure you go back and, and replace it if you're planning on, you know, using the machine again. Uh, just gotta remember how to do this. Pretty sure you just, yep, that little cover comes off and. Yep, you take the battery out, and wow, this thing looks to be in very uh, good condition for a 30-year-old battery. Either that or it's been replaced in its life lifetime. I'm pretty sure these are made by Maxell, but this one says Tatarin on it. So I don't know if Apple shipped them with uh, that specific brand with these machines, but you know. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so here's our motherboard uh, for the Mac, and I don't know if I got it in frame last time because I wasn't looking, but now you can see the 68030 processor where the battery was and some other things uh, like the ROM chips, but as you can see, I don't believe there's any more corrosion here. Give it one more little rub over because I think it, I just want to be safe. And as I did more and more, I noticed the corrosion was in more and more places, even all the way down to, even all the way down to this area right here. So that battery actually did probably explode in some way, but uh, I was sort of thrown off by the fact that the battery itself does look fine. Like there's no visible corrosion on the battery. Um, but with that, I think I'm going to actually put this back in the machine and see if it fires up or at least shows some some more life than it was before because, uh, well, I cleaned it. <laughs> okay, so I believe I've got the motherboard back in there now. And admittedly, uh, I've, I'm not hooking the hard drive back up, power or data. I'm not going to bother with that noise. Pretty sure this thing can boot without that. Um, now, I, I'm not really sure if uh, my minimal cleaning has really done anything to help the, you know, the function of this Mac, um, but I'm going to see, we're going to plug this in, be very careful about it too, because again, exposed high voltage electronics, but we're going to plug this in. and flip the switch and see what happens. Oh. 
That's not good. Nope, not comfortable with that. All right. Um. Uh, oh boy. Uh. Right. So, what you just saw there was that. Um. And that's that's not something you want to see. At least I don't think. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I, I, I think I think we have an analog. Uh, I think we have a an issue with our analog board, which is this thing right here. It acts as our power supply. Um. So that's probably not supplying enough power. We certainly did not get to hear the Macintosh. Uh, play any uh, noise like a bong or it's more of a, a chime here but admittedly that that's very scary and I don't really think I, I uh, want to turn this on again because or at least not until I do something else because that's that doesn't seem like a very safe thing to have on for very long exposed um, yeah. I'm, I might have to do it one more time just to... Um, yeah, I might have to do it just one more time just so I can um, get this... Get, get it on video for people to see and diagnose, but... Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty unsafe. You don't want that. <laughs> okay, so you know shit's gotten serious when... Uh, the analog board is out of the machine. And if you take a look here, I'm gonna grab the camera, but if you take a look at the CRT here, yeah, that's not good. Uh, diagnosis, dead CRT. Uh, this is not fixable, this CRT. I will have to get a replacement one, and I don't know when that'll ever happen. Uh, but this yoke, the deflection yoke, essentially just fell right off of it when I touched it, and it still had the glass in it, so, yep. We're going to need a new one of these. Um, yeah, that's going to be an interesting uh, thing to film whenever I get my hands on one. So there could be other things wrong with this. Um, for now, I'm going to give you a little bonus. And I'm going to take this hard drive out, and I'm going to put it in a different machine. And we're going to see if it boots to anything. I originally thought the hard drive was the problem, but I heard the same noises that I thought the hard drive was making coming from the CRT yoke. So... This hard drive might actually be fine. All right, so this is the hard drive from the uh, Mac Classic 2. It's a Connor drive. I'm assuming that 40SC means it's a 40 megabyte drive. Now, uh, if this thing spins up, I'm gonna try and hook it up to my Mac Plus, which is over there. And uh, j -j -j -j, gotta grab the power cable real quick. Which way does that go in? There we go. All right, let's turn this thing on. Oh my God, it initialized. Okay, this thing's still working then. Let's hook this up to my Mac Plus and see what happens. Right, initialized. Will it read from it now? No. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ah, oh, this is awesome. It still works. And it's booting. Look at that. Oh, that is so awesome. Oh, the drive doesn't even sound to be in bad condition. It sounds great.
So I can't probably show what's much of what's on here because admittedly, this is a school machine. This came from my school. There's probably confidential stuff in here. But I will at least, you know, take a look at um, what kind of uh, programs are on here. At least that won't be a problem. Um, ULI timer. Free fall, free fall. I don't know what all that is, but this looks to be, yeah, oh yeah, it's for physics. Mac motion, data logger, sound, electricity. Yeah, so it's, it's all there. But again, I can't really go too deep into this because probably some form of personal information and I was told to wipe this. So, you know, I'm not gonna allow myself to keep all this. But what system is it running? Ah, yeah, it's been upgraded to system software 7.1. And yeah, wow, this is awesome. It works. This thing works. <laughs> what needs to happen? Well, I don't know if there's any other issues with this machine, but what needs to happen is I need to get a new CRT for this and never plug this thing in <laughs> until I get it. Because as you can see, since the deflection yoke broke off with the glass, or rather the glass broke off and it's inside the deflection yoke I can't plug it in I can't put it back on here so if I were to p plug this in and flip the switch I, who knows what would happen um, in fact I'm not even gonna allow anything to happen there the yokes mostly unplugged there's still some other wires uh, but yeah it's unplugged there's absolutely no way that thing's getting power now um, I need a new CRT. That's evident, as you can tell by the cracked glass here. And as you can see, the hard drive works. So I'm gonna keep that out and I'm gonna use it until I fix up this machine because it could be legitimately useful. Uh, <clears throat> in fact, I'm gonna plug in the hard drive cable back, back in here so that it's uh, not just flopping about in here. <laughs> able to go anywhere if gravity takes it. Uh, and I don't normally ask this, but what have I learned? Well, first of all, I learned what the heck a CRT looks like on the inside, and um, I kind of already knew the dangers, but I learned how to avoid the dangers, what not to touch, how to discharge it, etc. Um, I also learned I should probably get some electric gloves, or uh, electrician gloves instead of these rubber cleaning gloves, because I bet even just one little small pinhole in here could electrocute me and no, that'd be bad um it's also not out of the question that the logic board may have an issue but given the fact that it's cleaned uh, and i didn't see anything else on it i don't know uh really the only concern when you get one of these max is removing this battery which looked to be pretty much okay um yeah so that that's all right and um, main concern here is our analog board, um, whether that's in good working order or not, because I never heard a chime from the Mac, um, and honestly, this thing should power up if, um, th this Mac should release a chime from the speaker that's on the analog board if, uh, if I were to power it up, um, so maybe something is wrong with the analog board or the logic board, either that or something... I just did something wrong, but yeah. So I'm gonna put this machine back together, I'm never gonna plug it in until I, I repair it. And so until I get a CRT for this thing, uh, we're kinda at a standstill. Um, yeah, so that's all I gotta say. This is part one concluded, and I will see you hopefully in the next part, whenever that comes out, sooner or later, or never. Goodbye.